Hello, everyone. Welcome to the inaugural lecture and program launch of the UNESCO Chair in Rural Community Leadership and Youth Development. And thank you all so very much for being here. Um, I'll be back up here in a little bit to talk more and go on for our, about an hour. Um, but before we begin, I want to introduce our Dean, Barb Chris from the College of Agricultural Sciences, who will tell you a bit about the program and how it all fits in with the college's mission and all kinds of other great stuff. Well, thank you, Mark, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I know that we've had many welcomes already, but uh, I, I welcome all of you to be here with us today. Uh, for this inaugural lecture of the UNESCO Chair, I am honored to be here with the distinguished guests that we have with us today. I'm also proud to say that I think I've helped Mark to uh, in terms of the proposal and working together to, to make sure that his proposal got in and proud to see that he was successful in receiving and attaining this goal and receiving the chair. But some reality set in. That reality is now it's on my watch to at least make sure that he's starting to get off the ground in the right way and to be successful. But you know, after hearing yesterday afternoon's discussion, hearing the panel this morning and just hearing all the people that are out there that will come to bear and be able to work with, with Mark. I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that we will be successful. He will be successful. And it, I also know that we have a lot of resources within the college and the university that can come to bear uh, in, in his program moving forward. Now, this is a prestigious chair position for our university and our college. This is the only UNESCO chair located within a College of Agricultural Sciences, so you can see why I'm very proud. Now, there are four others uh, at four at other land-grant universities, uh, so, uh, but at least we are the first College of Agriculture. His emphasis, Mark's emphasis on rural community leadership and youth development, you know, it is a major theme of, of our college, and uh, we, you know, we believe that there is a critical need, not just here in the Commonwealth, but, but globally. And again this morning, as I listened to, to Joan Castro, I kept thinking 4-H, 4-H. And then for Sean to come up and, and Campbell to come up and talk about their program modeled on 4-H. Well, you know, 4-H uh, goes back a long ways. We celebrated the 100th anniversary just the other year. Uh, but you know how 4-H came about? 4-H really came about because it became clear that for the land-grant universities to be able to really change the patterns of some of the farmers and to really uh, get them to see some of the new innovations, that we really needed to work through their children, the youth, to actually understand the implications. And I think some of it, I think one of the earliest programs in 4-H was to take hybrid corn seed and have the, have the youth plant that to be able to show their parents what hybrid corn could do in terms of the productivity and the yield. So for many years, we've been realizing, and maybe not articulating, but realizing the importance of youth and the importance they have in agriculture and in global and in leadership. So we can see that this really is a good fit with the College of Agricultural Sciences. I, I was excited yesterday to hear about some of the three big uh, I ideas that Mark hopefully will talk about uh, today in his remarks, so I'm not going to dwell on them. But there's this one idea of taking the three chairs, three that are here, uh, with us today, uh, Mark being one of them, and taking the area of youth development and making a, a broader entity uh, to come to bear for the global initiatives. And I think that is fantastic. This chair will continue to make uh, Penn State, the College of Agricultural Sciences, a, a leader in rural development and community studies. And it will allow Mark to bring the best practices that are out there. We heard some of them today. Uh, to bring those back here uh, for us to actually utilize, but it'll, it'll allow him to turn around and take what he knows, the, the best practices we have, and the knowledge we have, and, and take it out to the world. 
this, this chair position, I sure hope, and I know it will, just based on what I've seen over yesterday afternoon and this morning, it will expand our partnerships and cooperation with other universities, institutions, NGOs in the US and abroad. And this will bring uh, significant, I hope, significant funding to come here and help support the research and teaching uh, within the college. Uh, we look forward to the future possibilities that this prestigious chair will allow Mark to accomplish. I am proud to be sharing this journey with Mark. And Mark, I need to say congratulations. Job well done. Now, it is my pleasure, we'll wait till that is finished. It is my pleasure to introduce the president of the uni university, uh, President Rodney Erickson. Thank you, Barb, and good afternoon, everyone. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to add my welcome and also to see uh, so many coll colleagues from the College of Agricultural Sciences. And I also see uh, quite a number of faculty and staff from uh, other academic units within the university and uh, other administrative units as well. So it's a, uh, it is indeed a great pleasure to uh, be with you today on this, uh, this very uh, auspicious occasion for, uh, for Penn State, for the College of Agricultural Sciences, uh, and for uh, Professor Brennan. Well, I want to uh, also add a special welcome to, uh, to three of our, our guests today, uh, all of whom you'll hear from. Uh, Pat Dolan is the UNESCO Chair in Children, Youth, and Civic Engagement, and Professor at the National University of Ireland, Galway. Uh, also here is Alan Smith, the UNESCO Chair in Education for, for Pluralism, Human Rights, and Democracy, and Professor at the University of Ulster in Northern Ireland. Uh, notably, Alan was one of the first uh, UNESCO chairs. Also with us this afternoon is George Papagianis, who is a program specialist and external relations and information officer from UNESCO. So we're delighted that all three of you gentlemen are, uh, are with us uh, for a couple of days here. Well, the, uh, the selection of Penn State and the College of Agricultural Sciences to house a UNESCO chair in rural community leadership and youth development uh, is a rare and prestigious honor. As, uh, as Dean Christ noted, there are only 18 UNESCO chairs in the United States and uh, four at land-grant institutions, and uh, this being the first in a College of Agricultural Sciences. But also only four of the UNESCO chairs worldwide are related to youth issues. I think having this uh, prestigious chair here at Penn State is a, a testimony to Mark Brennan's outstanding scholarship and a wonderful opportunity for, for Penn State. Um, I look at Mark and uh, uh, knowing uh, his record and uh, the level of accomplishment that he has uh, uh, put together in a relatively short period of time, uh, is, is really very, very impressive uh, for somebody that young. Of course, at my age, everyone looks young. <laughs> but uh, it is indeed impressive. And uh, would you please join me in a round of applause recognizing Mark <laughs> The second director general of UNESCO, uh, Torres Baudet, once said, if you want to make the world a better place for all men and women, begin by making your own campus a better one for all men and women. Youth is always in a hurry to get results. The quickest place to get results is at home. I think uh, those words uh, resonate very well here uh, at Penn State. And of course, in our home state as the, uh, the land grant university of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is one of the most rural states in the nation, and many people are surprised uh, to, uh, to know that, uh, having spent time in Philadelphia and uh, in Pittsburgh, and particularly anchoring large urban areas, anchoring our, the east and west of our state. But 48 of Pennsylvania's 67 counties are classified as rural. 
And by leveraging his experience in Pennsylvania and beyond, uh, Mark will be supporting UNESCO's priorities for addressing the specific needs of rural youth and communities. And by concentrating on issues of youth and community capacity building, Well, thanks uh, for uh, moving out so uh, so quickly. Um, we uh, we simply have to do that. I have no idea what uh, what happened, but uh, I'm going to make an executive decision and truncate my remarks. <laughs> Hold the applause. Uh, I, I know that many of you have a limited amount of time that uh, that you could be here today, uh, including me. I have to catch a plane uh, later this afternoon, and uh, I want to make sure that we have as much time as uh, as possible to uh, hear from uh, from Pat and Alan and George, and uh, very especially from from Mark uh, as our, uh, our new UNESCO chair. So I will simply end my remarks. Uh, by saying uh, again, thank you uh, all for being here. And uh, I wish uh, Mark and uh, our activities surrounding the UNESCO chair every, uh, every possible success and uh, tremendous impact going forward uh, as uh, we, uh, we really address these important areas uh, in Pennsylvania, in other parts of the country, and indeed in other parts of the world. So thank you for being here, and I'll turn it over to our guests next.
You know, it's, it's not often that I actually get an entire movie as my introduction. I actually feel pretty, uh, pretty lucky to get up here. Uh, my name is George Papianis, and uh, I am uh, with UNESCO. I am uh, UNESCO's spokesperson, essentially, to the United States, and I'm working here to uh, build relationships and uh, wave the flag and uh, augment understanding about the organization. And I, I, I want to I just draw on a few things that come out of that movie, just to make a point, and I, I might return to it later. Uh, I do want to be brief because we are on, uh, we are actually right now realizing how important it was whoever it was that invented air conditioning. Um, he deserves a round of applause. Um, so you know I, I, a few things popped up there. One, of course, you can see that at its origins, the UNESCO emerges as an organization that is in many ways driven by the values of the United States. It's, 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 it, it was Eleanor Roosevelt who was among those who pushed for the organization. Archibald MacLeish, the uh, Librarian of Congress, actually wrote the preamble to the UNESCO Constitution. You saw a number of, of, um, of UNESCO programs there. World Heritage is based on the National Park Service model and it was actually through Russell Train and several others in the Nixon administration that worked very hard to create the idea of the World Heritage Convention. And again, we tip our hat to, to the American spirit in, in bringing that to the fore. Man in the biosphere, which is something that a lot of people kind of scratch their heads about, but it'll tell you how it has practical applications in this country. Some of you might be familiar with Mammoth Cave down in Kentucky, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. There's a river that runs through Mammoth Cave. In fact, it is essentially the lifeblood of Mammoth Cave. And by using the Man in the Biosphere program, what the managers of Mammoth Cave, the National Park Service, was able to do was they were able to work with the community to ensure that that waterway would continue to be protected. Of course, protecting this incredible natural heritage that is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And so there's a very, very strong connection, and I'll, I'll get to that in, in my closing. There are probably three things that I'll touch on briefly in my comments, one of which is I'm a procrastinator. The second is I'm a Greek American. And, and, and the third is, if I can reach into my pocket, a penny for your thoughts. I once read that Anton Chekhov said, if you, if you show something in the first act, you've got to do something with it by the third. So let's go put that penny up there as a reminder that I can't forget it. So I'm a procrastinator. You know, I, I, I got this wonderful invitation from, from, from Mark to come here, and, and I have to tell you, this is truly an honor for for UNESCO, and I, I speak for the Director General right now when I say we are so pleased to have this relationship with Penn State, a great American institution of higher learning, joining with, with UNESCO to essentially turbocharge its efforts to reach out across the world and also to be the recipient, as we've seen here today already, the recipient of the inputs from around the world. This is the important platform that UNESCO creates. We set the stage for interesting things and good things to happen, modeled on a promotion of peace, the sharing of knowledge. This is, this is the UNESCO way. So I was thinking about the work that Mark's been doing, and I was looking at stuff, and I was talking to friends of mine and colleagues and other educators and trying to get my, my thoughts together. And as I was driving up here, I was conceiving about what is it that I want to talk about. And two things happened on the drive up. One, I had the most amazing moment of when I drove onto the property on the highway, on the property of the prison. I don't know if any of you have come out of, on, on, on route on Interstate 80, but there's a sign that says you are now entering the property of the state prison. The thing that really scared me was that it seemed like a very long time before you exited that property, and I was wondering if maybe I had done something wrong and I was now incarcerated. Um, so that, that, actually, that actually made me think a little bit, and of course, one of the things that I've heard, and I, I have to attribute this to Martha Cantor, and those of you who don't know Martha Cantor, she's the Undersecretary of Education, 
I heard Martha speak once, and, and, and she's a friend as well, and, 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 I, and she said, you know, every time I see a prison, I know we should have built a school. That stays with me. The second thing that I realized as I was driving, this drive was very, was, was very uh, evocative of, 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 of ideas, and, or provocative, I guess, um, was the exit for Innovation Park. And I thought to my Innovation Park, I mean, what is that all about, right? What's innovation all about? And, and then the juices again begin to, fl to flow, because I'm actually on cruise control now, so my, my, my feet aren't even touching the pedals. So I'm, I'm half driving, half thinking, which is probably why you want to stay away from me. I'm in a silver Chevrolet, by the way. It's rented, so, um, but it's fully insured. Um, but I am thinking about these things, and I'm thinking, okay, Innovation Park. And I think to myself, well, you know, what is it? You know, at UNESCO last year, the Global Monitoring Report was about youth and skills. And it's important, there's no question. Youth and skills is an important part of what we try to do regardless of whether we're in rural environments or we're in urban environments, when it comes to education, we're trying to shape people so that they can, they can be relevant to the world that they're about to step into. But then there's Innovation Park. And Innovation Park is about something that is, yes, it's, it has something to do with skills, but it has a lot more to do with creativity. And I was thinking then, then we, what, is it, what is it that we're doing when we're teaching, when we're, when we're forming our programs for education, when we're strategizing, when we're trying to figure out, and where is creativity in those formulas? Where does it fit in our thinking? And if it's not there, do we even know how to water the seeds of creativity? Have we thought about those elements while we focus on what is relevant in the 21st century. To me, creativity is something that, that I think goes to, to another part of where we are. And this is the Greek in me, because you know, you get a Greek, you get a lot of history. And I know that I know nothing. And that was one of my ancestors, Socrates. Of course, I think he was an uncle. Um, that's a big Greek thing. We all think we're related to Socrates. We're probably related to the Turks more than we're related to Socrates after 400 years of being under the Turkish occupation. But Socrates is someone that we hold near and dear to our hearts. And he said, I know that I know nothing, which is the beginning. I think of that sometimes, and I think of it as almost the Hippocratic Oath of education. It's the starting point for all creativity, for all quest for knowledge. And I think now, too, about where we are here and where we want to bring the rest of the world and what we want to share. And it makes me think that we have a starting point that's very critical, and that is to create lifetimes of learning. That education is more than just about the skills, but it is about the creativity to be innovative and to reinvent on a regular basis your relevance within a changing society because in our lifetime we have already seen the world change dramatically and things have happened very very quickly and groups have become empowered to do things and make a difference in this world and which among them has been the most influenced by this youth they have seized on the social media as a way of expressing their aspirations, their discontent, their hopes for the future, their fears for tomorrow. And as we have watched this process unfold around the world, we see how important it is, the work that those of you like, like Mark and through Penn State are focusing on this issue of youth leadership. 60% of the population in the Arab world is under the age of 25. We have seen Egypt, as an example, go through dramatic change in the last couple of years, in part pushed by this upswelling from that group that mobilized the community 
and it has never been mobilized before using the social media, the capacity for them to manage that process, to move people forward was beyond anyone's comprehension. But the problems that we have seen emerge afterwards are the questions of leadership. Now leadership is not necessarily about being able to lead as in, within the community of young people, but it is about planting those seeds and cultivating that leadership so that as time progresses, these new minted leaders who have acquired the understanding of how to mobilize communities can take those communities beyond the period of revolt into governance. And so the work that we see here today is important work for the future, not only of our own communities here at home, but really in terms of fomenting peace and understanding around the world. At UNESCO, one of the areas that we are taking leadership is in the Global Education First Initiative. This is a marriage of UN agencies powered by the UN headquarters in New York, drawing on the educational expertise of UNESCO with our sister organization, UNICEF. And the Global Education First Initiative has three priorities. Its three priorities are number one, to ensure that all children get to school. Its second priority is to ensure that when they get there, that there's a quality education that's waiting for them. It's okay to get them there, but if they can't get a good education, what's the use? The third, which is a very critical part again of our discussion and dovetails so importantly with the work that is going to be carried forward here at Penn State from this day forward as part of the UNESCO umbrella, working with others as well who are UNESCO chairs, is this issue of global citizenship. The next generation is the steward. We have learned already that we must, we must take care of this planet. We must be global citizens. We must understand that like the stone in the, dropped in the center of the pond, the ripples go to numerous shores and behind certain coves, places that we don't necessarily see but where there is an impact. And it is eminently critical that global citizenship, beginning at the community level, is a part of what we do in education, is a part of the creation of tomorrow's leaders. And so I want to thank Mark Brennan for this opportunity. I want to congratulate him, as well as Penn State, for becoming a part of this and seeing the value in being a member of the UNESCO platform, getting onto that platform and making things happen. And I will finally take my penny for your thoughts. UNESCO is in a critical time in its existence right now because we are no longer being funded by the United States. The US cut its funding at the end of 2011 when the UNESCO General Conference admitted Palestine as a full member. This was based on a pre-existing law that dated back to the 1990s, a very different time in the world. Yasser Arafat was still alive, there was the PLO, there was no Palestinian Authority. We were also probably the only 800 pound gorilla in the room. Today, we talk about the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, emerging economies that are exercising and also putting forward their agendas on the world. UNESCO is an organization that values engagement. It is the one element of the organization that I think truly is of the greatest appeal to Americans. Not the fact that we run the tsunami early warning system that protects America's shores. No. It's about engagement, fighting for our ideas. That's the American tradition. We like to get down in the trenches. We like to argue for what we believe in. And we like to try to convince others that this is a good way to go forward. And right now, because we are in arrears, the United States will lose its vote at UNESCO in November, on the 4th of November. In fact, it's not a punitive issue, it's an administrative issue. Simple as that. You don't pay. There has to be a consequence. And so, I encourage you to think about 
all the things that you've heard today, all the types of programs to which people made a reference to their work with UNESCO. And think about the value that it ha that has for you here at home. How it is an expression of your values, of what you want to see in the world. And I often say to people, if you want to know what the world will look like in 20 years, take a look at what UNESCO is working on today. I hope that 20 years from now, the United States will see some of its reflection in that image. If not, we're in for a very rough time. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Pat Dolan. I'm the UNESCO Chair at the National University of Ireland in Galway. Um, and first of all, I'd like to say that uh, it's a, an honour uh, and to thank the President of the University here, the University community, and Mark Bennett for the invitation to be here to celebrate uh, the, with Mark and his inaugural lecture as UNESCO Chair at Penn State University. Um, Mark asked me very recently, when uh, before the event, uh, about the work of UNESCO Chair and uh, particularly the, the first few months and what it's like. And I did say to him that, uh, and this is, not, is true, I did say to him, it can be a bit hectic at the beginnings. So if alarm bells start going off, <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. I literally didn't mean within a few minutes. Um, just to say that on behalf of myself and Dr. John Canavan, the Associate Director of the UNESCO Centre, and other friends here from Ireland, uh, Alan Kearns and, and Sean Campbell, who you've heard from this morning, we're thrilled to be here. We're thrilled to um, acknowledge three things, really. Firstly, that um, Penn State is a university which is uh, renowned all over the world for uh, its expertise. And it's a very fitting host institution to host the UNESCO chair. In fact, I can't think of a more fitting host uh, academic institution. Um, and then when you look at the post holder, Mark Brennan, it's the second point for me. Uh, I've known uh, Mark for a number of years, and uh, I think he is an honorable scholar, but more importantly, he's a very honorable person. And I've come to, uh, if I've learned anything in life uh, in, in, in recent years, um, I think that uh, the honor of relationships and human capacity building is key to UNESCO. And apart from his skills as a scholar and academic, uh, Mark Brennan uh, holds personable skills that go beyond borders and go beyond prejudice and seeks into the hearts of humanity. Um, very often people uh, talk about the importance of youth, uh, and George quite rightly uh, pointed out the importance of youth in future generations. I think it's also, as I've learned from Sean Campbell very often, it's incredibly important to remember the contributions of youth now in their own rights. Uh, as we sit around this room and what they do. And in fact, there are many young people who are wiser than older people, including me. So it's a, a great day to be here. Um, it's a tremendous future, I think, for collaboration, uh, not just between us, uh, the community of UNESCO chairs, and Alan will speak in a moment, um, but also in terms of the, the global uh, education community. Um, one thing that I noted particularly around uh, uh, with, with, with some humour, has been that Penn State University come to Ireland, to our capital city, Dublin, and play a big game in Crow Park next year. And uh, it's amazing the number of people who have sudden interest in Ireland. It's great to see. Um, but I want to finally say that I think um, it, this is a tremendous occasion. It's a tremendous honour. Um, and I remember uh, Alan Smith, uh, who will speak in a moment, was a tremendous support to me when I became a UNESCO chair. And I remember at my inaugural lecture, um, the Deputy Director General turning to me and saying, well, UNESCO is a family. So, as George has quite rightfully said, Mark's very welcome and Penn State is very welcome into the family. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, yes, my name is Alan Smith. I'm the UNESCO Chair at the University of Ulster in, in Northern Ireland. Um, and Mark has many friends in Ireland, uh, north and south, 
Uh, as Pat has said, we respect him as a scholar, we respect him as someone of integrity, we respect him for his commitment to working on issues related to youth. Um, in my particular work, the chair was established just after the peace agreement in Northern Ireland, and that focus on youth has been extremely important uh, to us uh, over the past decade or so. We no longer have any children in our schools who were born during the conflict in Ireland, uh, and we're very much looking to the work that we do with the current generation of youth and future generations for the optimism that we have about the future um, for our own society. So we look forward to many years of working with Mark and his academic colleagues here uh, in Penn State. Uh, it's a wonderful celebration of his achievement. It's great to see his family and friends as well as his academic colleagues here today. I know it must be of tremendous pride to you to see his achievements recognised. Uh, no gathering in Ireland would be um, complete without a few words of, uh, from a writer or a poet, and I'd just like to, to end with a few words from uh, Seamus Heaney, our, our uh, Nobel laureate, that kind of reflects some of that optimism, and particularly the optimism we have in Ireland uh, about the possibility of a, a, a better future for our own children and for, for the youth as uh, we engage with those issues today. Uh, Heaney says, Human beings suffer. They torture one another. They get hurt and get hard. No poem or play or song can fully right a wrong inflicted and endured. But history says, don't hope on this side of the grave. But then, once in a lifetime, the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. And I think our hope is that, for Mark, your time has arrived. Uh, this is the opportunity to shine. You'll have noticed the stage has emptied. Mark has moved centre stage. And I hope you would just join me now in congratulating him as we hopefully listen to uh, his words of wisdom uh, for the future development of the chair at Penn State. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you.